Being a part of the Harry Potter movies has to be one of the most incredible experiences of a lifetime. Whether you had the role of trio member or a simple background character, as amazing as the opportunity might have been, it didn't guarantee time in the spotlight outside the realm of the wizarding world. And unfortunately, several actors never made it as big as Emma Watson or Daniel Radcliffe. Luna Lovegood, so beloved to Harry Potter fans throughout the world, theoretically should have paved the way towards stardom for Ivana Lynch. What about Fred and George Weasley, two characters so popular that fans practically rioted when one met his end? To this day, their top Google searches include inquiries into their marital statuses, yet their film careers have never really launched after their Hogwarts days. Even actors who made viewers swoon like Sean Biggestaff, who played the overzealous Gryffindor Quidditch, Captain Oliver Wood, may have gone on to see steady roles in some other films or TV shows, but never seemed to reach the same heights as Harry Potter. Even though some of them remain fan favourites, their careers remain stagnant for these 10 Harry Potter stars whose careers fell off after the movies ended. Number 10. James and Oliver Phelps Fred and George Weasley Honestly woman, you call yourself a mother? Who didn't love Fred and George Weasley, the troublemaking twins famous for their dragon dung bombs and other wheezes? Fans know the twins aren't real redheads in real life, but we fell hard for them nothingless as the class clowns we always wanted in our own schools. Older twin Oliver played the slightly kinder George Weasley in the films but hasn't done a lot of movies since, appearing in Own Worst Enemy and Danny and the Human Zoo. James Phelps, who was Fred Weasley, has a similar story along with some of the same movie credits. Perhaps the Phelps brothers have the same issue that many other twin actors face. Past childhood, there aren't many roles for twins together, and it can be difficult to break into acting as a single actor once you're well known as half of a set. <laughs> Uh, a couple of things really, um, one, there was a chance to get in a major film, uh, two, we had a day off school, it's probably not the best place to say that. Really. Number 9, Jamie Waylett Crabbe. Vincent Crabbe is one of the least liked characters in the Harry Potter world, he's one of Draco Malfoy's hulking not too bright henchmen and we've never really given any insight into why he's either of these things. Without any sympathetic qualities, it's easy to burn his at him. Jamie Waylett, who played Crabbe in every movie except Deathly Hollows Part 1 and 2, did a wonderful job playing the part. Waylett, who initially auditioned to play Dudley Dursley, hasn't had a single acting role since playing Crabbe. In fact, he hasn't had a great run in general, getting arrested for violent behaviour and stealing property in 2011 during the England riots, landing him some time in jail. Hopefully Waylett will have a more positive future. You know what, me and Jamie, we, we, we never, I won't, I won't even lie and say we were great friends. He was always slightly in his own... Um in his own zone and he maybe wasn't um, one to appreciate quite where he was and what he was doing. Um, it's massively disappointing, yeah, I mean I haven't really got too much to say other than the fact that, you know, it's uh, he's let himself down hugely really and uh, and and it's a disappointment for, for him and, and the franchise really, so just disappointment really. Number 8, Bonnie Wright, Jenny Weasley. Too many fans, Jenny Weasley served as a spitfire young woman who rose from a shy little girl to the only person willing to call Harry out on his BS. She rounded him out, completing him like the other half of a set of bookends, and created a parallel to James and Lily Potter. To others, particularly those who hoped that Harry would end up with Hermione, she was simply Mary Sue. Bonnie Wright, who was cast in this iconic role, played the part admirably, but hasn't yet found stardom outside the series. Wright has played in several roles since her time as the youngest Weasley child, but none have seen as big. From After the Dark and the Sea to the upcoming A Christmas Carol, Wright continues to act and may surprise us yet. Number 7. Sean Biggestaff, Oliver Wood Plenty of fans fell for Oliver Wood, the overzealous Gryffindor Quidditch team captain in the Harry Potter universe. Not only was he a skilled athlete, but he had the Scottish brogue at least he did once Sean Biggestaff portrayed him. Biggestaff played a perfect Wood, and it's easy to see why Alan Rickman, who requested that he play Tom in The One to Guess, saw potential in him. Although he only officially played Wood in two films and was cut for the time out of another, he also had a cameo in the final movie. While Biggest Staff went out to land some memorable roles in both TV and film, he's also had mostly shorts since then, as well as at least one abandoned project. Biggest Staff may have been on Doctor Who and Cashback, but he's still mostly known for his portrayal of Wood. That rainy day is here. It's here. It's here. And I'm standing in front of you with an umbrella, a water tight. Of course. Of course. But I think the time has come to take that opportunity. Number 6. Josh Herdman, Goyle. He died on screen in Crab's stead. Since this usual nefarious partner in crime who died in the book was cut from Harry Potter and Deathly Hollows Part 2, Sliver and Gregory Goyle was the lunar and perhaps meaner of Malfoy's minions and Josh Herdman played him in the movies. 
The English actor has been working in the business since the young age of seven with the help of his father, but his claim to fame is still on the character Gregory Goyle. Herdman has had much more success than his on-screen partner, but his career still hasn't taken a turn to start him. He has parts in films like Peggy, The Estate Film, and Common People, and he'll be in the upcoming Robin Hood and TV series Marcella. What's uh, the most special thing you ever signed? People get to sign all sorts of things. Some people have like really expensive Harry Potter books, which has cost them hundreds and hundreds of pounds, and you know they buy replica replica props and things like that. So some of the stuff you're signing is very, very, very precious to the people. Number five. Devon Murray, Seamus Finnegan As the adorable Seamus Finnegan in the Harry Potter films, Devon Murray seemed like a funny and quirky kid. His mishaps and little quips matched his character perfectly. Seeing him smoke while filming proved to be alarming for many fans, but that juxtaposition was nothing compared to witnessing Murray posting on Twitter and compromising photos of women. It was disheartening to say the least to see him afford women with such little respect. Unlike many of his castmates, the bulk of Murray's non-Potter works such as Angelus Ashes and Yesterday's Children occurred prior to the film. Although he doesn't have any work to reference since making the Harry Potter movies, Murray will be in a new movie, Damo and Ivor, the movie in 2018. I have rabbit harping home. Turn this water into room. I have rabbit harping home. What's Seamus trying to do to that glass of water? Turn it to rum? Has she managed to eat tea yesterday? Before. <laughs> Number four. Kathleen and Cooley and Jennifer Smith, Lavender Brown. Three different actresses played the role of Lavender Brown, Ron's first girlfriend. In this case, the character even had a change of skin colour, which is unfortunate because the series is already not the most diverse piece of entertainment ever made. Kathleen Cooley, who played Brown in the Chamber of Secrets, was replaced by a white actress, Jennifer Smith, for Prisoner of Azkaban. Why neither of these two young women were up to continuing the role, we never yet know, but neither of the actresses have been in any production since. Jesse Cave played the lavender that one one temporarily fell hard for in the Half-Blood Prince. Cave has continued acting, working in TV series like Trolleyed and Glue, and started her own YouTube channel. Satara Shah, Shafali Chowdhury, Asa Nazad, and Sharon Sandhu, Padma and Parvati Patel. Casual fans may not notice that Parvati and Padma Patel, the twins Harry and Ron Weasley took to the Yolbo and Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire were played by several actresses. Most of these young women were unfortunately saw little to no career advancements after their small parts in the series. Satara Shah and Shafali Chowdhury both played Parvati in different films while Padma was portrayed by Aslan Azad and Sharon Sandhu. Shah's single experience in a movie was in Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Sandhu who played Padma in the same film was only given the title of Girl 2. Azad who only film credits include a Harry Potter role went on to be a model. Chowdhury, the only actress of the four to make any other films, worked in two short films. William Mellon Nigel Walpert won't sound familiar to any Harry Potter book fans because he's not in the books at all. Walpert, played by William Melling, is a character invented solely for the films. The Dumbledore's army member is sort of a jack of all trades, delivering lines that Lee Jordan and Colin Creevy would have had in different scenes. He looks like someone who might be a Dennis the Menace sort of character, giving Harry trouble, but he's the opposite, fully supporting Harry and Dumbledore throughout the series. Although he escaped the death intended for his character, Melling's career hasn't had as much as luck. Steady work has kept him in TV series like Fried and Frankie Drake Mysteries, so maybe we'll see him launch back into big films yet. Number 1. Rupert Grint As a member of the Big Three, Rupert Grint should have gone on to become a huge star like his co-workers Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson. But he just didn't make it. Yes, Ron was the least liked hero of the three, but he still had a huge following. Grint might not be as attractive as Radcliffe and Watson, but he's not exactly ugly either. He still has many fanatic fans following his face. Everyone from Scorses to Curran said he was the best actor of the three too. So what gives? Grint nearly quit acting altogether, and some say that his casual nature is the reason why he didn't make it big in Hollywood. He's too much of a nice guy to be in cutthroat competition. Still, with his credential, you'd think that he'd have to compete for the good roles. He has executive produced and starred in a TV series, Snatch, but it airs on little watch streaming services like Crackle. One, two, three. <gasps> Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. My eyes are so dry already. <laughs> How's your day going? Very good. How's yours? It's it's going. Yeah? I'm... Oh, how are you no! blinked? <laughs> <laughs> wow, hello. How are you doing? Good. Wow, wow. I am. Um... 